Uh, so nicely put together, uh, a look back there. 20 years went quick. Now it's a so-called food trend that is facing some resistance. Incorporating creepy crawlies into our diets. Well, there, there's a start calling them creepy crawlies. <laughs> that won't do it. Yes, insects <laughs> as food are a thing apparently, but many of us just find the idea disgusting. Yeah, some of us are hardwired to find the idea disgusting. So, can our tastes be changed? And is it simply a matter of marketing? Eugene Chan is from the Monash Business School's Department of Marketing, and he's been looking into the subject, and he joins us now in the studio. Eugene, good morning. Nice to spend time with you. Good morning. Just a matter of marketing, is it? It is. Uh, I mean, I'm from the marketing department, and I'm trying to get people to learn more about the foods they eat, you know, to promote sustainability to promote their physical, physical health. Yeah, and uh, as part of that, we know that the new pro protein, so-called, uh, are things like bugs and mm. some worms and some insects and the like, and they've been taken up and been eaten by some cultures around the world for mm -hmm. a long time. But for the West, that's a pretty appalling idea. It is. I mean, there is the, the health benefit from eating proteins, but, you know, we also forget that it's also part of the dis discourse on climate change. Uh, you know, the resource can take up actually fewer reacts into edible food, can take up actually fewer, re uh, fewer resources and fewer energy and water compared to beef and so forth. Before we talk about the attitude towards them in the West, um, where are they eating it with insects? Who's eating insects? Uh, in the West, well, there are a certain segment of uh, consumers who are more adventurous and willing to try, and obviously people who are... Uh, but, it, but even beyond, uh, uh, all around the world, who, yeah. who's eating insects? Yeah. In Mexico, they, they've yeah. been eating um, grasshoppers for years. Yep. Yeah. I had fried grasshoppers. It would have been, my goodness, close to more than 20 yeah. years ago now is when yeah. I had them. I was appalled when I saw a plate of deep-fried, crispy grasshoppers in front of me. I just, you know, did the whole kind of like, took a punt, yeah. like a punt, yeah. picked a word that I didn't know, thought, that looks interesting, let's try that. And I just couldn't come at it. But that's quite common now. Yeah, I mean, it, it is certainly part of your culture, part of your upbringing. You know, for instance, Asian cultures are more used to the idea of eating insects. I mean, I, I grew up in Canada, and I actually hate eating blue cheese. I think blue cheese is disgusting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so think about well, that. It is, you know? it is mouldy. Um, so, you're, you're, so you're looking at the, the marketing then or the communication of this idea. How would the marketing need to change in order for, to get us on board? Yeah, well, there's uh, basically three different ways to get people to uh, accept the idea of eating insects. Well, one is to learn about the health benefits and the sustainability efforts that I just mentioned. Number two, uh, you have to overcome the emotional aspect, that disgusting aspect. And the third is culture. You have to just get used to the idea of eating insects. Well, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> it is. It's not necessarily going to happen. By culture, which is, um, can be a, a loose term, you mean you have to grow up on it, right? It is. It is, it is very hard. Uh, it is ingrained into our psyche. Uh, I mean, about 10 years ago, there's uh, uh, two Canadian researchers who've uh, organized these bug banquets, uh, coming into insect, three, four course meals, all of, uh, all, all of insects. And they did find that it does help promote sustain, uh, eating insects in the short term, but the long term attitudes still needs to, needs to be researched. We know that we actually have a disgust response yes. that's hardwired into the brain and um, it's actually a primitive uh, uh, reflex to prevent us from eating things that might poison yes. us and might harm us. Given that's there hardwired in the brain, isn't this more a brain training challenge rather than even a marketing one? Well, I kind of think of it as a, on a pendulum. Uh, Yes, there is that disgust, but it is very, very difficult to overcome that disgust because, it, like you said, it, it is ingrained into our existence, into our psyche. Mm. So the training, the cultural aspects, the learning about the educational, uh, the nutritional benefits, that, ha that has to you know, creep up uh, in order to get people to start accepting the idea of eating insects. You know, there's a lot of marketing around food, um, particularly with uh, veganis veganism, which I think is, a, we can safely say now, is a, is a growing... Uh, it is. Trend. And it's not, con it's not considered the outlier that it used to be. No, that's yeah. right. No. And one of the marketing ploys that I've noticed is they don't use the word vegan all the time. Right. They make documentaries about plant-based eating. Yeah. Mm. And so um, what type of marketing would see us cross that divide and, and get into eating? Yeah. Uh, eating? The, the new phrase. Yeah. yeah, I mean, certainly giving some... Uh, uh, clever names to it. So instead of c calling it, you know, raw beef, now 
beef tartare is a lot more acceptable. Yeah, carpaccio. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you know, instead of eating you know, mealworms or cockroaches, you, know, you have to give some sort of cool name to it. What do you think uh, it would be? What should that cool name be? I, I don't know. You're the marketing guy, come on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I think the new protein goes some way, doesn't it? It also makes you feel like a little bit of you're at the vanguard and, and yeah. like the, the, the new yoga or the yeah. new exercises. The, the, the pioneer new, and a new trend. Yeah, exactly, if yeah. you're that kind of brave person. Because it, give us an example between uh, uh, milk and silkworm uh, substitute. What, what was that one? Uh, yeah, so if you actually uh, tell people that it's this, pro this milkshake or this uh, shake uh, was made of uh, milkworm protein, people are actually more disgusted by it. Yeah. Just telling them, like even though it's actually regular cow's milk, you know, yeah. uh, but just the idea, just the label would gross people out. Leave the silkworms alone. They've got a, a bigger job to do than to be turned into a smoothie for me. You know, they, they, they've got to make that silk. Um, Eugene, nice to talk to you. Thanks so much. It's Thank a really you. interesting conversation. Get back uh, to us on those names. Yeah. Get to I work will, on I some will. better names. And as we um, head into a, a Christmas weekend, of course, and talk about Christmas food as we will later in the week, we'd love to hear from you as to whether anyone is including creepy crawlies on their Christmas table. Now, let's what, go to it. What are the odds of that? <laughs> well, it depends how you